Zelda. Um, I don't know what to think of this matchup. I'm pretty sure Roy just destroys Zelda, but we're gonna see how it turns out. You think what? I think Roy destroys Zelda. Ah, uh, I, I think I, I could see that. She 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 needs time to set up, and Roy is really goddamn fast. So uh, I I could definitely see her having to struggle because she won't have time to like build the knight, and he's like. And he's specifically like quick in the air and stuff. For sure. I think the one thing Zelda has in this matchup is probably Edge Guard. Like, Nairu's love is a pretty good tool versus Roy, just because he's forced to do that up B. Um, aside from that, I don't I don't really see much. Uh, Tom could just spam tilts at ledge, and all Zelda can do is jump, potentially. But then Tom can cover that with, like, a bear or a fair. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, like, Sardos could probably go off ledge and then recover in some other, like, creative way. Overall, I just feel like Roy has all the tools to cover all the different mix-ups Zelda's typically do. Regardless, like the flow chart regardless though, Sardo's doing a really good job of keeping this really even. And honestly, like both of these characters, while it might be easier for Roy to like hit harder, like uh, she definitely has access to strong tools. But Tom is going to get the first kill, uh, just kind of doing a long, a large full hop to cross up with the back air. But wasn't able to get too much from it because Sardo just read a jump and went kaboom. Sent him right off the top. All right, but ever since coming back, uh, Sardo hasn't been able to get any hits in. Tom is just, just got the pattern going right now. All right, yeah, finally gonna get that. stuffed a little bit. I love that little movement on the platform too. When Tom was on the mid plat, he was just like dashing back and forth, dashing back and forth. He's like, ooh, are you gonna neutral B here? Are you gonna neutral B here? That's like the best way to beat it. Right. This is a scary situation because you're definitely well at like kill percent, and you already tried to go for the the back air to kill out the stock. But uh, Zelda neutral B, you know, super just uh, like not disjointed, but like you know, has a lot of active frames. Yeah, super active. If, if from four to eleven, it's invincible or intangible. I think intangible. It's intangible. Don't intangible. touch her shield. She'll kill you. You actually cannot <laughs> touch her shield. Do not touch her shield. The thing is, you can't touch her shield, but she can't touch your shield because, like, if you have out of shield options, then her moves are actually like pretty slow, you know. But, but don't think you can do that. Look, see, touched her shield and she spun at him. And now, <laughs> what was looking as like a pretty good lead for Tom has turned into a pretty okay lead for Sarado. If Sarado gets some damage like that, uh oh, don't die. He might die. Didn't die. Uh, yeah, now we got a pretty solid position for him. Sarah Duke doing a phenomenal job right now. Having Tom at kill percent. Whoa. And if he Whoa. lands on the shield once. I think that might have killed death. on a regular stage, but uh, gonna be living a little bit longer. <gasps> he actually juked. He actually juked. He was like, <laughs> look at the knight. Just pay attention to the knight. Pay no attention to the princess right here. And uh, goddamn. Look that at this. He was just like, look at the knight. Yeah, look at the knight. Look, look, it didn't go anywhere. Boom, idiot. I got you. Wow. I didn't clip off. The oh my god. I missed a bunch of clips. Very sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, this is what happens when I commentate. I miss, I miss kills. <gasps> Don't touch your shield. <laughs> Man, how are you? Oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, hello. You all right. Hey, I'm Gretch. On, you know, Wi -Fi. Yeah. And I... with a character I happen to know a little bit about. Yeah. And uh, Z, good to see you. Or nice to meet you. I don't know that I've met you before. But hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, so I actually did hear you talking a little bit because I was in the footstep before. Um, 
Ho does win this uh, in a lot of ways on stage, but like we said off stage, he sort of has problems. Uh, this is not as nearly as bad as Krom. Krom, when he gets off stage against Hella, pretty much just dies. Because uh, Phantom, like, mm -hmm. always trades in his favor. But, Certainly. Uh, what you did say also about the tilt is absolutely correct. There's very little Zelda can do with a well spaced Roy that just kind of like presses jab and forward over the ledge. So a lot of this game, I imagine, will be the uh, Roy winning neutral. Zelda will be at the ledge, and then he'll get back, and then it'll come down to a ledge uh, setup situation. There's also like the air speed thing is pretty big in this, honestly. Like you saw there that he was trying to chase with up air while Roy was landing, and Zelda just doesn't have much to chase if Roy wants to move away. So, I don't know. Zelda basically has to pick the right time when Roy wants to come in and Roy decides to just leave, so they usually can't chase unless she has a phantom already set up. Yeah, and we've been seeing like just Tom running around, not really much of a care in the world as Zelda just has, or just hasn't had the mobility to really keep up. Um, <laughs> that said though, Naruto actually, the first game was doing pretty good, and then near the end, he landed that sneaky up the... So, oh. I want to see more of that. Did he get him with the uh, teleport into him? Yeah. Oh! Uh, I That's uh... It's definitely aided by uh, online a little bit. Um, for offline, provided you're not doing anything, that's a reaction carry. But, oh, yeah. Uh, online is a lot better. Um, that Phantom was also a good thing, too. A lot of people kind of underestimate just how high uh, Phantom can reach at the tip for fully charged. It does hit even the high platforms on uh, Town and City and what they there. For sure. Now we're left the damage. Ooh, oh, that was unfortunate. Sardo yeah. had the up tilt. Uh, Sardo had an up tilt and it just hit him completely the wrong direction. And then he got punished for it. Kind of unfortunate, but it's still on Tom. I missed it. Did he get the uh, noodle hitbox or did it descend in a different direction than normal? I think. It was oh, was that it not... right there? Yeah, that was it right there. I think it was just different direction. Oh, I got you. Yeah, that was his uh, jab when he was facing the wrong direction. That's a really strong option in this, too, because uh, if you're spaced out, it's, it's very scary for Zelda to go for anything out of shield, although her out of shield options are really fast. Uppy is frame six, and Fair and Bear are frame eight. Uh, if they're not, like, in you with the up B, it doesn't always hit, and even if it does hit, they can hit the sour spot of the second hit. And then nice. Fair and Bear, if they hit the sour spots is unsafe on hit. So if he spaces out of jabs, it's really difficult for her to deal with that pressure. Like jump out in air is not very good against swords. Oh he definitely. Trading with it sucks. And that was good coverage too. If he had walked in too much he would have eaten me up there. The common trap I'd Alright. <laughs> After that fast little replay, we're now on Callow. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that was the replay. I thought I was like bugging out with him a little bit. Oh, that's a good chase. Hyper speed. I normally don't see records for chase there, but that's a pretty active hitbox you can put out, so that's not a bad idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, sometimes you do have to throw out the random fairs to put the fear of God into your opponent, because they are one of the strongest aerials in the game, power wise. Uh, yeah, that is a bad thing. It actually kind of lit on that. I thought he was going to miss the punishment there, but it looked like it was still a punish. I'm not sure. Yeah, Roy's got the right idea here, too. So whenever uh, Phantom is coming online, if he doesn't want to be in the mix-up range, uh, the optimal place that Zelda wants you to be is right where uh, the uppercut sort of starts going vertical for the final charge, because that lets you do all sorts of mix on you if you stay close in that area. So you'll see a lot of, like, walking back as soon as you know this is a Phantom charge. See, that there, that's the best way to be having to shield that. Basically, you have to be able to constantly mix up both up. Yeah, certainly. 
Would you say Tom's movement is good? Because right here I'm noticing he's doing a lot of like dash dance movement around mm -hmm. the, the Famonite. Would you say that's like the practical way to navigate around it? Yeah, so part of the thing, right, is that the built-in mix-up with uh, Zelda's fandom is that if you're close enough to jump into it on reaction, which is one of the main reasons it's difficult to deal with on Wi-Fi, uh, you can jump over the earlier stages of her family. The only thing that really catches jumps is that overhead slash that you just saw there a second ago. Uh, everything else whips on close jumps. So the idea is that if you dash jam, like, just around the outside of her phantom range, if she pulls a phantom and you happen to be running in offline in way, then you can just jump and go for a punish, and even if she releases phantom or continues to charge it, she's probably going to get hit. Um, so by threatening that range just outside of that, it's scarier to pull phantom. I mean, you're still gonna do it, because phantom's, like, one of the best zombies in the entire game, but uh, he has to enforce that, because then when he does, he makes it like, oh, I'm taking the risk of time, and he's hesitant to pull Phantom, that means Roy can take a lot of the space spaces and pull Phantom. He's like, that, that Phantom right there is really good, he's probably going to run out of skill last one to punish, but it's just going to be at the end of the station. That one was a good so nice. take out, too. Really tempting to like chase that for a punish, even though I don't just have one there. So we waited it out with the double jump base. That was really smart. And what you saw just there, him running up and getting the grab, him running up and getting the grab is part of the mix. Because obviously, like if you have Phantom out there, you don't want to get hit by Phantom. Phantom sucks yeah. a bit, but uh, if you shield yeah. that and you're at that range right there, Zelda gets grabbed and stuff. And Zelda's Grab frame data wise is kind of awful, but she has a combo throw and two kill throws that mix up with each other DI wise. Uh, do you think, so you don't do you want think to have that way. Uh, uh, spot dodge may have been the answer there. It's sort of very nebulous with that mix up, right? Because if he spot dodges, uh, he opens himself up to an early phantom release. That's sort of like. Basically, any time that you're within phantom's range, you're in a constant mix up for the release, and then whatever Zelda can do while she closes it on. Um, but I think Spot does might have gotten out of that situation. He could have also rolled in, honestly. A late roll in, because uh, Phantom wasn't quite within range, he might have rolled back into the See, he didn't actually hit his field there. Though if it did, Zelda does the pick throw set up top of it, it's really good. And then the forward smash there, if he had neutral gotten up and shielded, it's kind of hard to punish at that range for a lot of characters. 